Okay, I just couldn't resist bringing in my very own Pooh to share with you for today's Winnie the Pooh segment. Will you please come away with us? Well, we have two products for you. This is a six by six paper pad. Now, this is Winnie the Pooh, not from Disney. This is Winnie the Pooh from A.A. A. Milne. And the uh, license, the uh, trademark has expired. So that's open to the public. And Echo Park has taken advantage of that. They've done the six by six paper pad. There are 48 sheets. There are 16 designs and they are duplicated three times, which is great. And then there's also this chipboard words and phrases. And you can see all of the pieces right there. And of course, I have used them very nicely. Now, before I get started on the projects, let me just show you the sheets of paper because I know you like to see those. So we'll get in close and let me share them with you. As I said, there are 16. They are on, they're double-sided. And this is one of my very favorite. You will see it used, um, I think just once, but very significantly. And again, they're double-sided. You do have some cutouts. These are the largest ones. And that's the back side with that blue dot. And there's Pooh pondering as he as often does. And then on the back side, there is some dots, there's plaid. I'll show you something extra special with that. And then some other of the cutouts and the sleigh and poo and the um, ornaments. And this is a, uh, a nice weight card stock, by the way. And this is some uh, nine of them, so they are smaller. And then this is a whole rose, smaller rose, as you can see. And I haven't been counting, but when we get back to that row of poos, <laughs> we will be stopping. And there, again, more cutouts. So you've got uh, a lot of backgrounds on the back, and we do have some solid colors in here, as you can see. And I think we're probably about ready to, uh, oh, and then all of these greetings, which I did not use, and then that's it. So. Three times you will see those. Okay, we're gonna get started with this very first one. And one thing I wanna point out, now the cards that we use are five inches by six and a half inches. Now, as I said, these papers are six inch by six inch. So they would normally be smaller than this card, this six and a half inches. Got all that math? Okay, but you can do something. And I did it on this card and you can see there's a hole in the top. You probably noticed that right there, which makes the papers taller. So what you can do is you can take a little bit and let me show you what I did. So I covered the front of my card with the paper, but I um, duplicated a little bit of the paper underneath by meaning that I cut off the edge of it and glued it behind here so that I could cover the front of my card and you would not see where I patched that hole. So that is the first tip of today's webisode. You can actually have paper that is six by six and a half inches. So that's kind of neat. So what I did is I trimmed the left-hand edge off um, an inch and then I use that piece to patch right under here. So I just took a little snippet. And because this is really a, um, you know, an easy to duplicate pattern, I just clip that off and put it underneath and covered the front of my card with that plaid. Now, it didn't hurt that later on I put a snowflake on top of it, but you didn't have to do that. Now, the other thing I used is this paper. You saw it when we were going through all of them. And I used just a small part of it because I wanted to um, mat, in fact, it's on the other side. Uh, let me grab it. Let's see, that is the um, one of the cutouts, as you saw. So this is outside, the snow is falling, friends are calling. Yoo-hoo, you can just hear Pooh saying that. I didn't say it like he would. It would be outside the snow is falling and friends are calling, ooh-hoo. So 
that is just glued. Now notice it's kind of toward the right, and I did that on purpose, because I wanted to have room for that great big snowflake, and then obviously that is on the chipboard pieces. Now, because I'm going to put that on the snowfall acetate, and by now you've probably seen this, this is an item that Hunky Dory does every year, and I am so grateful for it. They put it in a package. I think there are five pieces in a package, and it's great. But all I did was to um, cut it the same size as this red piece where I matted the um, cutout on top. And then I placed the snowflake on top of it. And I used the extra sticky tape to attach the snowflake to that. And the extra sticky tape is this. It has the red liner and just attached it there. And then I had my piece of extra sticky tape not attached to my card at that point. So I put glue on the back side of the extra sticky tape, excuse me, on the back side of the acetate and glued it to my card. Does that make sense? That way, it the acetate is not 100% attached, but it doesn't need to be. It's just attached under the snowflake. Now later on, I added the snowfall, the snowflakes, as you can see. This is from the Dazzles package, and it has snowflakes in all different sizes. It has uh, sheets of tiny Dazzles. It has bigger sheets like this. It also has the borders, which, as you can see, I ran right along the fold and I just place them all over. Now, with the one right here, because I'm opening the card right on the right-hand side, I put a little bit of extra sticky tape underneath this snowflake and made sure that that stayed down. But over here, I didn't put any. So that dazzle is just holding the acetate to the card. Same thing right here, but it, it doesn't need to be secured everywhere. Does that make sense? Okay, but what I have is some glittering, shiny things, my snowflakes, around my very happy, sweet Winnie the Pooh. So that's worked nice, and Piglet's down there too. So that's the front of this card. Now for the inside, I wanted something different. So that's what I have. So I used the blue sheet. Now remember I showed you that there were some solid colors. This time, I just trimmed it down. It is smaller than the inside of my card. And I use this one, Walking in a Winter Wonderland. And so, obviously, this is from the chipboard piece, you can see. Now, this is matted in green. This is just glued down straight. Because this chipboard is a little bit thick, it wasn't necessary to foam tape anything down. But I wanted a little bit more of a definition of this blue. So I placed my cut piece of blue onto my craft mat. I used Air Force blue um, on the, uh, with my blending brush, and I simply brushed it in from the edges and just went all the way around that piece, then glued it to the inside. Now with this, I also um, use the same set. Now there's 10 sheets of dazzles in here. There's a blue set just like this. This is uh, obviously in silver. There's a blue set, same idea. I've got the same border and I've got snowflakes all over. And I love the thing that I've got that fun plaid, very much red and silver on the front. And then I have very much blue and silver on the inside. So that worked very nicely for me. Okay. We will set that aside and get started on our next card. And this is also using uh, the cutouts. And as you can see, and I really wanted to play, um, Pooh obviously has his red jacket. He is yellow. And of course, Christmas is red and green. So the red, green, and yellow just seemed really perfect. And in this case, um, I wanted to use a card that was cut a little bit, so I measured two inches off the card front and trimmed that down. So I have three inches left, and that gave me plenty of room. And as you can see, well, let's see, this is the sheet 
that I decided I wanted to use the Marion Bright, very, very substantial size, as you can see. And I wanted to play with uh, the reds and the greens, so I chose these two. So this is the green dot, and this is red with X's all over, kind of like hugs and kisses. And um, there's kind of no right or wrong. You could, you know, do lots of different things with it, but I chose to keep the red on the inside and the green on top. You could have reversed it easily. And there are several uh, reds uh, patterns to choose from. And yet I wanted to punch up this a bit. Again, wanted to add some sparkle to what's going on with the papers. And of course the sparkle, nothing works better than glitter cardstock. So the green cardstock is what I matted this on. After I put the pieces on the card front, now again, when you remove the holes, you have a six by six piece of paper. So the six inches tall works just fine. The one thing I always want to make sure that I'm doing is that when I am cutting the pieces on a situation like this where they're going to be seen, that they are identical in size. And anything that I do to them is also identical in size. So, because your eye is really going to be able to tell if something isn't the same. So you can kind of see that right there. So placing both the green piece on the front and then on the inside, the red piece, both of them. When I matted that cutout on the glitter, you can see that on the top of it, it's just a little bit, um, it felt a little, like it kind of needed something more. And in my world, I think ribbon is just a really nice addition. So my red ribbon set just gave me lots of options. I chose to go with the crepe ribbon and simply to knot it. So I simply wrapped it around and just knotted it and let the ends go on opposite sides, just trim them each at an angle. And I'm very happy with that because the ribbons stay within the confines of the card and it just adds a dash of uh, color and it brings the red a little bit more on top of the card, which I really like. Now, going to the edges of the card, I wanted to add our stitch dazzles and these are new. Uh, they've only been out really just a couple of months. And this package has four, black, white, gold, and silver, so obviously white. And you can see that these look very much like stitching. In fact, one of our customers said it just really, she felt it really looked like you'd taken a needle and thread and had stitched it. So we did the um, same one on the two long sides. In fact, let me, I guess you can see it down here. And then a different one on the narrow did the exact same thing on the inside. So that worked out nicely. And like I said, you just wanna make sure that everything lines up exactly the same, because otherwise your eye will see it. Now, when I finished that, I um, felt like it needed just something more. So I went back into this chipboard pack and you can readily see it because your eye is going to connect all those greens and it says Christmas is the most sharing caring time of the year very sweet so this also duplicates the green so you can see I've got three greens on the front and a couple of reds there now for the inside I used this little guy and it says let's see let me show you the whole sheet there we go it's this sheet, so um, this little one. And I felt that it needed a little bit more oomph, so I uh, matted it just going on the sides of it on that same green that I used on the front because obviously I had pieces left, although you do get three of each one. So I certainly had room left and just put it there. And I'm not sure if you can see it there. Maybe if I wiggle it, there you go. A little bit of the stitch dazzles just down there. Um, it's not, you know, something that's in your face, but it's just kind of right there, kind of like a little bit of snow down there. And Christmas is a togethery sort of holiday. Who's right up there with that message in the chipboard. 
So that's the second card. Again, I don't want to do a lot to take away from Pooh, but I do want to support him. And I do want to add a bit of shine and sparkle. So that's, uh, that was my thinking in doing these. Now we're going to get into some different cards. And this is the next one. Now this is using one of the cutting dies. And this is a trifold surprise. So there's the card as it presents. There is the sheet that I told you about in the beginning that I absolutely love, my favorite of the whole collection. And there is my card. And I am very happy with this. And I'm happy with how this worked out. So to begin with, this is using the trifold surprise card. Now, as I look at this package, it tells me that the uh, die is nine and three quarters inches long. Now it's five inches, so I know it's gonna go through my Gemini Junior, or if you have a big shot or anything that's a six inch opening. But the nine and three quarters means that my six inch paper is not gonna kind of work. So I went into my papers and I have, let me pull it out here the Christmas Aglow cardstock. This is 12 by 12, and look at all those Christmas colors. Just, it's going to work perfectly. And I chose the yellow, as you can see. And so I, I'm gonna turn this over because my die is inside. And what I love about the fabulous folded dies is that the instructions are packaged with the die, and you're never gonna lose them. And so that just works so nicely. And I don't have to go to a computer, look it up and try to figure out how to do it. It just works nicely. So what you do is certainly die cut it. And then I'm just going to place it the way the diagram is. And I'm going to fold this according to the diagram, which is a mountain fold right here, a valley fold, mountain fold, a valley fold and then it's going to collapse down just like that. And of course, the neat thing about these dies is that you can make a sunflower <laughs> card or you can make a Winnie the Pooh card just exactly that way. So this became my base and I really wanted to have something special along this flap. Now you would take your bone folder and burnish those folds to make sure to keep them nice and nice and tight. The other thing that's great with all of these um, cutting dies from Fabulous Folded is that they will fit in the 10 envelopes just like so. So you don't have to worry about not having an envelope that will work with it. Okay, so remember I said how much I love that sheet. So it's perfect for just cutting upon that a strip. It's just really designed for it. So that's what I did, but obviously I've got to have a problem because I want that to be longer in order to go the length of my card. So it doesn't really take two whole lengths, but it takes about one and three quarters. So simply cut both of them and you can see, I don't know if you can see from as far away as camera is, but I, well, I guess you can, but I did have to overlap them. So I just trimmed right next to Pooh's ears and his heel and overlapped the two layers and put them there. But before that, <laughs> well, telling you about the piece I like best, but before that, I selected two papers to go on the two sides. Now, knowing that I'm using my, what I'm calling my Winnie the Pooh yellow, I needed two reds. Well, you can see what I used. I used the plaid right here and the starry. Now I could have used other things. I certainly could have used the red that I used in the last project. And there's a plaid in there that I could have used too. So you've got, you've got lots of choices and that's really kind of neat. Um, I did for the one on the card front, I simply uh, matted it, and this time I used the uh, white glitter. And the white glitter is just gonna be like that. You can see the glittery glitter. And glued it to the center of the card front, ran it all the way, the whole length. The all is bright. Well, that is out of the chipboard, as you can see right there. 
And I wanted to have, again, more um, shine going on. So in the Thin Line Dazzles, now you can get them in a package, but you can also get the gold one by the sheet. And the sheet has 63 uh, border pieces on it. So that's a pretty neat deal. So I simply, it almost looks like thread around it, but it's not, it's dazzles. So all the way around it. And I wanted to make sure that this stayed up higher. So you might want to do what I did, which is I put these two pieces in place. Now this is the only one that's matted on the glitter. I left this one not matted on the glitter because I wanted to use more of this space for the uh, chipboard, okay? But I did do the same thing with the thin line dazzles all the way down. So you wanna put both of those pieces on and then secure this so that that way you know how much space you're gonna have. The other thing I wanted that I learned is that you wanna have the chipboard in the area that's open. You don't want it buried underneath this, this piece because that's gonna to get too thick and clumpy. So you've got the all is bright and within kind of that height, have all of these. So you can see there are some really tiny pieces of chipboard. This long one just fit perfectly, jingle all the way. And that little holly and the ornament, I thought just did a really nice little collage piece. Now to open this up, I also put these two bigger pieces. So we've got the, the best thing about Christmas is spending it with you. And notice that the dazzle just went right around that curve. So any dazzle that is going to have, um, it kind of has an opening where you can spread it, that's gonna work pretty well for going around a, a circular, like an arch or an oval or a circle. The um, tree, I didn't do anything to, but you can see how it's kind of resting along that, that opening right there. And then I did put the thin line dazzles around this piece too. So I'm happy with this because it does, I think it adds a nice surprise and it gives this piece being white enough attention that these are not pulling your eye away from Pooh and Piglet and Tigger and all the, the group. So there you go, So that's the card. Okay, I have one more for you. And this is it. Now this too is, has a surprise inside. So let me first show you this. Now this time we have Tigger and Christmas isn't a season, it's a feeling. You can see I've got more of the, the snowflake dazzles. Cause like I said, there were 10 sheets in there. This card I completely covered with the ocean suede paper which is wonderful. If you have not tried the suede, you're gonna to wanna to do exactly what I'm doing. You're gonna to wanna to pet it and it's really nice. So I simply covered the whole thing with that blue. And then I took the paper that you can see right here. It's, um, it's blue with white dots. So it kind of looks like snowfall. And that became my second piece. By the way, as always, I've written directions there down below just push, uh, click on the card and you'll see the instructions. You can print them off if you want to. Um, I wanna make sure that you can see this. So let me put, let me put white underneath it. There you go. That probably looks a little bit, a little bit easier to see. So the, um, so we've got the blue and then we've got the dot. Now the dot I wanted to um, color. So, I did this, so as you may know, I use a piece of cardstock and I will take my prism ink pads and smoosh them on it and then make a note as to what color it is. This happens to be Prussian blue, so I smooshed it there, wrote Prussian blue. Um, Hunky Dory came out with a new blue, which is called Air Force Blue, which I did right there. I kind of wasn't sure which blue I wanted, so I used just a snippet of the blue that I had trimmed off of here. In fact, you can see that hole at the top. 
and I did a little bit of blue on each one. This is the Air Force blue, and I thought it was fine. It didn't, um, it kind of blended nicely with it. The Prussian blue made a little more of a distinctive blue border. I kind of went with the Prussian blue because I wanted that distinctive border. So that's, um, so this is something I use all the time. I don't always do this, but this time I did, so I thought I would share it with you. It's going in the trash now. Okay, so here is that piece. So I put it onto the craft mat. I took my Prussian blue, since I've decided that, and then just brushed it going from the outside toward, a little bit toward the inside. That took care of that, okay. Now, what am I gonna do? So this is obviously the cutout I chose. Um, I decided to mat it on more blue, so it's just kind of fun to go through what do you have that's blue, and it's obviously this. Now you've seen me use this before, but it's wonderful. This is the Blue Snowflake Holographic, and look at that. So you can see I did it about an eight, uh, about a quarter of an inch uh, border, and it just does a nice job of showing snowflakes without overwhelming our little tigger right there. So I was pleased with that. Now, I did contemplate putting some ink around that piece, and I did try it, but I wasn't really happy with it. So I just thought, nah, that isn't really needed. So I opted not to have it there. So I did go back into my snowflakes and brought out the, um, blue set, silver set, and did the border, added those. Now, we also have, speaking of blue, we have some, those are the snowflakes again, we have some large um, Christmas words, and you haven't seen them, I'm happy to show you. So I've peeled off the backing just so you can really see it. So joy is what I put here, and I just thought that would do a great job, and this is a blue joy, but I could have done ho ho. I could have probably, that's probably all I could have done <laughs> because the others are quite large. Um, but I was pleased with that and it worked very, very nicely. Now, that's what it comes like when you see it. We do have them in red and we have them in gold and we have them in green. So you've got lots of options there. Now, you ready for the inside? Because there's something going on here. And let me open it. Voila, look at that. We have something new. This is the new stadium cutting dies. But first, you can see this paper is, the, um, is on the back of one of the other sheets, and it's got the stripes, and it's got, well, it's dots that are made into stripes, and it's got other dots. And so I simply cut it in half and put a piece on each side. Because this is opening in the center and it really kind of causes your, uh, causes your eye to go back and forth. I wanted to, I didn't want this just to be white. I wanted to really, really have a nice opening scene, so to speak. So that's, that's what we have here. Now, what I did, let me show you. <clears throat> this is, like I said, this is the new stadium die. It just came out this month, actually. And it is super, super simple to put together. And it is done with four pieces, as you can see. Now, because um, of the papers here, I didn't want to use the um, Winnie the Pooh papers for this. So I went back to my Christmas Aglow cardstock. Here we go. And I used the blue that is in there because that would go with the blue that I have going on in this card. So I created my, my box with that, and that worked out nicely. And um, da, da, da. the directions are right here. In fact, this webisode was just done the beginning of this month. It's always the first Saturday of the month. And as always with anything from Fabulous Folded, the directions are right inside of the, uh, right behind the package. So everything goes together. And you can see, yeah, it's just these pieces and you can kind of tell this is the, the backing piece 
and then there are three layers. And it goes together with the extra sticky tape, the same one that I showed you earlier. So super easy. Okay, but what I thought was brilliant, in fact, Debbie did this first, is that when she made her box, she just put some extra sticky tape on the left-hand side and put it inside her card. And I thought that was so much fun that it would just do really well here. And so I'm pleased with this. So uh, thank you, Debbie. So I lifted her idea, uh, made it my own, and used it here. So lots of snowflakes, of course. This is one of the other pieces, of, obviously, of the papers. You can see this is also one of the other cutouts. Now, the happiest of holidays is underneath this snow globe. And I just cut the snow globe out separately, trimmed out the happiest of holidays, and glued them here. Uh, believe in the magic. It's just going across that back uh, piece. We've got some chipboard, more of the dazzles, and then this little grouping of our guys down at the bottom. Now, if you are seeing some snow, let me show you what that is. This is the sno soft snowfall. We had the snowfall acetate. This is the soft snowfall. Super easy to do. Simply put your uh, specialist glue, just squeeze it on wherever you want the snow to be, and then just dip it into your tub of snowfall. Tap it off, and you are done. Just super easy. And uh, I did that with each of the pieces, did them separately before I glued them onto my uh, stadium. Oh, I also did cut out one of the uh, stockings, so that worked out. And I did a little bit of dazzle on the side, too, so simply to make it bright and shiny everywhere. So that is how I chose to use the um, Winnie the Pooh collection. Now, because you get three of each sheet, you will have ones left if you choose to make the ones I did. Um, I had, let me see, let me take my notes off. I had all of these left of the chipboard. And you can see I was pretty generous as I used them. So those were all done. And I did have a lot of the papers done. So in our money saver, we have combined both of them together. As you can, as you would expect, if you want to add, no, I think we also added the Christmas Aglow cardstock because it's just going to enable you to do more with the collection. So that's the money saver. Of course, you can buy each of the things separately, um, just whatever you would like. The money saver of all, as always, is on the right side of our screen. Um, Pooh is uh, going to go home with me because that's where he lives, um, and uh, that will take care of us. Now, as I said, all of the instructions are down below. If you are watching us on YouTube, we would absolutely love it. If you would like us, if you would subscribe, feel free to leave any sort of comment you want to. Head on over to Paper Wishes. Take advantage of that money saver. And um, check out the instructions if you like. Be sure to get those measurements. You can duplicate everything as I've done or you know, just pick and choose and do what you would like. I wanna thank you for joining us. I wanna thank you for um, being uh, with me today and uh, for being the best part of our Paper Wishes family. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.